Good morning. What a joy to greet you today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, God has impressed upon my heart to preach from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, beginning with verses 1 through 9. I want you to take a Bible and open it to Matthew 13 and follow me when we have read this passage of Scripture. Leave your Bible open. Follow me word by word and verse by verse. This is what the Word of God says. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude sat on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he had sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. And some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. When the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You recognize this to be the parable of the sower, which comes in the middle of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the ministry of Jesus Christ on this earth lasted three and one half years. It began when he went down to the Jordan River, where John the Baptist was baptizing unto repentance. The Bible describes great multitudes being present to witness John's baptism. And as John was standing in the Jordan River, the Bible names the place at the Jordan River as Enon, A-E-N-O-N, because there was much water there. And John was baptizing and he looked into the setting sun down a long, solitary road. And there he saw a figure coming. And as John saw that lone figure approaching him, as only John the Baptist could, he stood and pointed his finger and in a great loud voice declared, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. It was the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to John and said, John, I have come that you might baptize me. And John immediately said, No, Lord, I need you to baptize me. But Jesus said to John that the righteousness of God the Father might be fulfilled. John, you must baptize me. And Jesus and John waded into the Jordan. And John immersed Jesus, the word is baptizo, put him under the water. When Jesus came up out of the water, the Bible says the heavens opened. God the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descended upon Jesus. God the Father spoke from the throne room of glory and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. It was at that moment Jesus began his earthly ministry. He was born in Bethlehem, which means house of bread. He grew up in Nazareth, the city of Nazareth, with Mary and Joseph. Joseph was a carpenter. Jesus was an apprentice carpenter. He was called a Nazarene because he was from the city of Nazareth. But when he began his earthly ministry, he left Nazareth and went to Capernaum. Why would he do that? Because Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own land, his own hometown. He would never know the respect that a leader, a preacher, a great teacher should have 
if he tried to minister where he grew up. So he was led by God the Holy Spirit to move to Capernaum. There he began to preach the gospel. As his ministry began, he started in the Jewish synagogues, in the Jewish meeting places. But now in this passage of scripture we've just read together, he's about halfway through of his three and one half years of earthly ministry. The door to the Jewish synagogues has not been completely closed to him. He can still go there. But because of his preaching, many of the religious Jews, Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, are being born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. They're leaving traditional, empty, meaningless religion and following the Lord Jesus Christ. So the leaders of these groups have become filled with jealousy concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. They begin to try to plot and find a way to stop him and to have others stop listening to him. He's halfway through his ministry now, through this three and a half, one half years ministry. So on this particular day, he's been in a house preaching. But the Bible says he goes outside the house down to a lakeside there to preach. It's very descriptive in the passage we've read. It says that multitudes, great numbers of people came out to hear the Lord Jesus Christ. Both the hillsides were filled with people. The hillside in front of him was full, way up high with people. The crowds were big. And the Bible says they were thronging or pressing upon Jesus. So much so that Jesus went to the seashore, got in a boat, and pushed away from the seashore and sat down in the boat. Now he sat in the boat because it was the custom of the Jewish rabbis to sit when they taught or spoke to the people. The reason he got in the boat was this. This is something you can learn today. Jesus is the creator of all things. The Bible says that every single thing that exists, Jesus spoke it into existence. He knew about water. In the day that Jesus is preaching here, there were no microphones, no loudspeakers, no amplification. But yet there were great crowds in the distance on the hillside. He wanted to be certain that everyone heard him. So he got in the boat and pushed away because water amplifies sound. Those of you who are fishermen can go out on one of the big lakes early in the morning, sit in your boat and put your fish bait out, and you can see another boat far in the distance. But if you know what I'm talking about, You can hear every word they say very clearly and very plainly because the sound is bouncing off the water. Jesus had no other way to amplify his voice than water, so he got in a boat, he does it on more than one occasion, and he began to speak to the people. It was the time of year in Israel when they were planting crops. They were sowing seed. Now, the way they planted crops in the day of the New Testament is quite different from today. If we get ready to plant a field, we go out and plow it and turn it up. They had no real good way to do that. So what they would do is go out and set the field on fire and burn all the vegetation off of it and burn it clean. And then the farmer would take his precious seed out and sow the seed. Remember in the day of the New Testament, you didn't run to farm supply. You didn't run to the farm store and buy a new bag of seed. What you did when you reaped a harvest in the fall is you went through all of your crop, you picked out the very best that you had, and set that aside for seed this next year. It was very valuable, very costly to you personally. And no matter how, fam- how hungry your family got, No matter how great the need was, you did not eat your seed for the next year. If you did, you have no way of planting next year's crop. The next year, when it come time to plant, you went out and burnt your piece of property off. And then there were two ways in the New Testament that farmers sowed seed. One was to put the seed 
in a big leather bag like our modern burlap bags and lay that bag over the back of a donkey or an oxen and take a sharp instrument and punch holes on each side and let the seeds dribble out. And then you would just lead that animal up and down your property, letting the seeds fall out. That was not the popular way. My grandfather, who was a farmer, would say that's a lazy man's way. The other way was to put your precious seed in a big leather bag made out of goat skin and put it around your neck. It's the way I've done it myself many times as a boy growing up on a farm. You stick your hand down in the sack, you walk out on that new prepared land, and you scatter the seed as far as you can in every direction. It's called broadcasting seed. The same word is used in the New Testament when it commands you and I to broadcast the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Scatter it as far as you can in every direction. As Jesus sat there, he could see farmers in the distance sowing seed. He wanted this great crowd, this great multitude of people to understand two things. Number one, the true spiritual condition of their own heart. And number two, how man responds in one of three ways to the word of God which Jesus preached. So this is what he said. A sower went out to sow some seed. And as he sowed the seed, some of it fell on the pathway. What was the pathway? Well, in the day of the New Testament, everyone lived in a walled city. And every day at sunset, all, at sunset, all of the citizens would go inside the city and they would shut the big wooden gates and bar them. And then they would put watchmen with weapons all around the top of the wall to watch all night to see if their enemy was coming and to sound the alarm if they did. At sunrise, they would go down and open the gates. Now, in the day of the New Testament, there were no grocery stores. You didn't go to Kroger, to Ingalls, to Walmart, to Piggly Wiggly. In this day, you grew the food that you ate on your table. So everyone lived inside the walled city, but everyone had their own small farmland outside the city. And they would go out and they would burn their property off and scatter the seed. But as they went back and forth, they were living in Israel, a Mediterranean climate, with very little rain. Now, every city had a big well, but the well was inside the city, not outside the gate. That's so if it were surrounded by the enemy, they wouldn't die of thirst. They would have the water behind the wall. In the morning, the men would go and take a wooden water yoke and put over their shoulders with a leather goatskin bucket on each end. Other men would draw water out of the well and fill the buckets, and then the man would run down the street of the city and out to the gate and out to his property where he had sown his seed and water his plants. That's how they did it. So get the picture now. Here's the man sowing seed. But as he's sowing the seed on his property, between each piece of land there's a pathway. And men are running up and down that pathway all day, spilling water and stomping the earth so that the earth on the pathway is harder than the cement in front of this church. So when he scattered the seed and some of it fell on the pathway, the pathway was so hard that the seed couldn't go in the dirt, it could not germinate, and it could not produce a plant or produce fruit. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Now what is Jesus teaching here? Well, Jesus is teaching here that in every church, in every Bible study group, in every prayer meeting, in every revival meeting, that there are always people who come in attendance. But their mind is closed and their heart is hard. Their heart is hard. And they don't want to receive what Jesus Christ is teaching to mankind today. They're hard-hearted. They're indifferent to the gospel. They come to church. Some of them sleep. Some of them talk and disturb others. Some of them do all kinds of things in church. And in the day in which you and I live, many of them sit there and do this all during the church service. They're just not attentive to the word of God. 
But every word that comes from the mouth of God is for each one of us individually. It's for our mind and our heart. And we're to receive the word of God because man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But there's indifference. There's indifference every church. If you go to the church where you're a member and you're a ten and you just glance around on Sunday, you'll see some sleeping. You'll see some talking. You'll see some scribbling notes and some playing with the telephone. They're just totally indifferent to what the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what he said when the seed was sown. The seed is the gospel. And the seed is good. And the seed can produce good food and good fruit. But it has to be received. And you have to let it germinate in your heart. Secondly, Jesus said, as the farmer sowed his seed, some of it fell on stony ground. That's hard to understand for some people. They say, well, he was he just dumb? Did he just say, here's a bunch of stones, and I'm going to sow my precious seed here? No. They burn it off. The soil looked good. He probably thought, man, if I sow my seed here, I'm going to have a real good harvest. But just under the surface of that soil was a solid shelf of rock. And the seed goes into the earth, but it can't go in deep enough. The sun comes out and warms that seed and it germinates and sprouts and beautiful little plants spring up. And perhaps in the beginning the farmer says, oh, I'm going to have a really good crop right here. But then as the sun beats down on it, because those plants cannot go through the rock, they cannot put down their roots and draw nutrients and water from the earth, they're scorched and they're withered and they die. What is Jesus teaching in that great crowd of people in every church, every Bible study, every group that meets? There are always people who come and they hear the word of God and they say, that's the word of God. And I hear it and I receive it. But they're always too busy to come to church on Sunday night, to come to church on Wednesday night. They're always too busy for a prayer meeting. They're always too busy for a Bible study. They're always too busy to daily live for Jesus like he commands us to do. He said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself daily and take up his cross and follow me. And we go to church Sunday by Sunday, but Monday through Saturday, we're too busy for God. We don't have time to pray. We don't have time to have personal devotion or family devotion. We don't have time to nurture and grow ourselves spiritually in the Lord. So when the trials come and the sun bears down, or we hear words like cancer, or surgery, or funeral home, and the big tests come because we are not rooted and grounded in Jesus, we wither up. We can't stand the test until we are rooted and grounded in Jesus by daily prayer, daily Bible study, daily witnessing, being faithful to God in His church, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, revival meetings, Bible studies, and any other time. Then thirdly, Jesus said, the farmer sowed the seed and some of it fell on good ground. Now you need to listen very carefully to this. He said, and it produced fruit. Some of it produced 100, some of it produced 60, and some of it produced 30. But here's the key. Everywhere the seed fell on good ground, it did produce fruit. But what is Jesus teaching here? He's teaching here that we don't all have the same spiritual gifts. We don't all have the same talent. We don't all have the same level of wisdom. But he's teaching without exception that every one of us who are born again, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Spirit living in us and we can bear fruit. We can't all buy, bear the same amount. We don't all have, I can't sing at all. We've got singers in our church that have beautiful voices. But God didn't, he hadn't called me to sing. He wants me to preach the word of God. I can't teach like others can teach. But he hadn't called me to teach. He's called me to preach. And God has given you spiritual gifts. And he doesn't expect you to do what I do or what someone else does. 
but he expects you to do what he's given you the spiritual gifts to do. And you know what? Jesus said, you will know my people by the fruit they bear. He said, an evil tree cannot produce good fruit, neither can a good tree produce evil fruit. He concluded by saying, every tree that doesn't bear good fruit is cut down and burned in the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you'll know them. Listen, if you've been saved, you can bear fruit. You may not be a Billy Graham. You may not be a great Bible scholar and speak Hebrew and Greek. But God's given you what he wants you to have to bear fruit for his glory. And we need to quit whining and belly aching and making excuses that we can't do what others do. And God hasn't asked us to do that. He's only asked us to do what he's given us the ability to do. That's the parable of the sower. Now, here's my question to you. What has God given you the spiritual gift and the spiritual ability to do? Then why don't you do it? Why don't you quit making excuses, procrastinating, and just not doing anything? You can come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You can go to a Bible study. You can go to a prayer meeting. You can go out on visitation. God doesn't require of us what we can't do, only what he's given us the talent and the gifts to do. Father in heaven, thank you today that Jesus teaches the truth. Thank you for the parable of the Good Samaritan. Thank you for the parable of the fruit bearers. In Jesus' name, amen.